All right, our first question is from Bailal Salvatore. Can you still progress in lifts while cutting? Uh, you can, but the more advanced you are, the more challenging this yeah, gets. Yeah, the less likely yeah, it is. Yeah, so when I would train clients, if they were new, if they were beginners, if they hadn't worked out in a while, then they would always progress in their lifts, even yeah. while cutting. You Because you, you would see those, those initial strength gains. And remember, a lot of the... Initial lift, uh, lift progress comes from the central nervous system firing better, better technique with the lifts, not necessarily because you have more muscle, although that contributes to having more muscle. But when you're advanced and you've been working out for a while and you reduce your calories, even if you don't lose muscle, even if you don't lose muscle, just because you have less calories, you're probably going to lose some strength. Or if you're like blessed, you're not going to go down in strength, but you're not going to go up in strength. You're going to you know, maintain the same. Now, because of this theory, this is also why I really like to switch up the programming when I transition into a cut or add in an exercise that I'd like never do and try and get good at it. Like we were just recently on a podcast, we were talking about this, right? Changing the routine up and so that when you get bored, yep. like great time. Okay, I'm going into a cut. Now I'm going to learn how to do a windmill or learn how to do a Turkish get up because you don't have a PR. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You've never done it before. Mm -hmm. So you're going to end up having to reduce and start really, really light. And so you start off with your 20 pound kettlebell or whatever that to do your Turkish get up and you're in a cut. And so you can't really tell the difference because you've never done a uh, Turkish get up in a bulk because mm -hmm. you've never been here before. And what you see, because it's a new movement, you're learning every week as you get better at it you actually increase your strength and so it's i like to do this for the the, this, the mental piece yeah. yes it's like a mental game that i play with myself that i'm like okay if i go to bench press which i've been doing for two decades i'm i know what a great day benching looks like and okay like every, and everything in between you mm -hmm. know to a to horrible day of benching and so if I'm always paying attention to that lift that I've 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 damn near maxed out yeah, my it'll potential. Mess with your head, man. Yeah, yeah, I like that advice to you know to seek novelty or something else that's going to stimulate you in a different way, so you could try at least to to gain those newbie uh, type of uh, gains and, and and get your muscles to still kind of respond like that because it is really tough. It's really tough when you're when you're cutting calories to 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 have that kind of same drive uh, and performance in, in these lifts. So yeah. you know, yeah, I think that's great. Advice. This is why I do supersets because. If I do a superset, I have to go lighter anyway. So because I'm already going lighter, then it, I don't necessarily, like Adam said, I don't pay attention so much to the fact that I'm using less weight. Then I kind of get into that mental space of the weight doesn't matter. It's all about the form and technique and I'm dieting. But yeah, your calories make a big difference. I'll tell you what, look, I could go on a cut for two months, lose a lot of body fat, get lean. And then I could have one high calorie day and I will be stronger the next day. Oh, the yeah. very next day, I'll oh, go yeah. up a lot. I actually just did this recently. Mm -hmm. I was doing uh, barbell squats. I've been cutting pretty aggressively. I had to drop my squat rate uh, weight down to, I think I, I dropped down to like 350. And then I had two or three high calorie days, 405. That's a big difference. That's well, a 50 pound difference. One thing I did want to add though, that uh, this isn't, this isn't a commercial plug for LMNT, but basically being so low in carbohydrates oh, and yeah. then adding in, uh, you know, more sodium has really helped actually to keep a lot of the performance in the gym higher. Dude, so that, so was, that was interesting to me. Sodium is the one of the most underrated, misunderstood nutrients uh, when it comes to athletic performance, especially if you eat low carb, especially if you eat a diet that is low and heavily processed foods. You're probably you will probably benefit from increasing your sodium intake. And you'll notice in the gym right away. Element really highlighted that for me too because I noticed my pumps got way better and same thing, I got stronger and had better performance. Now we're assuming that the, we're answering this all that's related to strength, but it just says progress, right? So also in lifts. Yeah, yeah. Also keep in mind though, progress in lifts could be you better form and technique. Good you know point. So it doesn't. Good point. We always we always think of like you know progressing, yeah, progressing focusing on the different attributes. Yeah, that's also why I like to shift to a whole other exercise so I get away from just always thinking about that. It's not the only way to get better. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get better in, in many different ways, and so. You know, obviously, when you're not fueling the body uh, uh, with the max amount of calories and nutrients, you're not going to perform at your highest mm -hmm. level. That's just that's inevitable now. So what a great time to not focus so much on that and focus on something else.